Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're hanging out here with Casper after doing my underwater gator tours with him today. So we had four people in here swim with him, having a great time. And uh, before we get into our topic of discussion, again, do my little infomercial. You can actually come and do the tour and hang out with me and Casper. I'm doing these right now every Saturday here at Everglades Outpost in Homestead, Florida. And you can check out all the info and book it on my website, crocodilechris.com. Now today we are gonna cover one that has been requested a lot. Uh, how is climate change affecting alligators? And can you discuss this and how, how has it affected them so far? How will it affect them in the future? And all this kind of, you know, associated topics. So I've had a lot of people ask me this one and uh, I have been kind of avoiding it because it is such a unfortunately politically charged topic. And so I'm gonna say right from the start, we are not getting at all into the politics um, just the science part of it, unfortunately, a lot of that gets mixed in unfortunate ways and we are not touching any of that. So just to keep it strictly in, uh, you know, climate change affecting alligators, how will it affect them or how has it already affected them? So let's start with how has it already affected them? What have I personally seen the effects of? And with alligators, I haven't seen any personal effects on them in my life or in, in my experiences, I haven't seen anything. We'll move over here where he's at so we can keep him in the video. But yeah, so far I have not seen anything that I would say is associated with climate change affecting alligators, but I have seen it affecting American crocodiles. So Florida is the only place that has both alligators and crocodiles native, right? So American crocodiles are relatively rare in Florida. There's only about 2,000 of them, and they are naturally rare because we are the northern extent of their range. So they range naturally from northern South America through Central America and then into southern North America, which would be South Florida. And their range is limited by the climate of Florida. So normally they're only found in extreme South Florida, which is in a subtropical zone. And then as you move up the state of Florida, it gets too cold for them to be able to survive. So historically, in the winters, if a crocodile ranged up into central Florida, it would be killed in the harsh winter that you would get. Except now we have had uh, so many mild winters. Now, 2010 was the last big cold snap that we had. And in 2010, a lot of crocs died. But that was the last one. So fast forward, you know, 10 years later or even longer now, um, we've been having quite a few American crocodiles start showing up as far north as Daytona and into Brevard County, uh, you know, above Brevard County is Daytona, um, up the west coast of Florida as well. So, Casper, where are you going? Come, come here. We'll keep you over here. Yeah, I know. You're just going to wander away. Um, I bet guy. So, the American crocodiles, because it has been warmer, because our winters have not been as hard, they have spread further and further up the state outside of areas where historically um, they were not recorded or very, very rarely recorded. And now they are with much more frequency being found farther and farther north up the state. So that's a very interesting effect. So as uh, you know, the climate generally warms and we have less hard winters. Now, here's the other thing too, though, associated with climate change too are unpredictable weather patterns which can be more harsh on either side of the spectrum there so depends on how you want to look at that but generally a warming climate is allowing the american crocodile to expand further up in and expand its range now the same could be said for alligators too perhaps they will be able to spread their range their range right now naturally ends around north carolina but Maybe as it gets warmer and less harsh, they can also spread their range up as well. Although that's also having a lot to do with the waterways and what's suitable habitat too. So, you know, this is a very, very complicated topic. So I'm going to speak in a lot of generalizations here and I'll just say flat out, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm speaking hypothetically on a lot of this. I obviously, I don't have a PhD in alligator climate change relations, so I don't know exactly. So I'm just going to speak a lot of hypotheticals there, but either way, perhaps their range will be able to expand as well. And then different crocodilian species around the world will definitely be able to have their ranges expand. Like we were, uh, George and I were just talking about like gharials. We're like, what about them? You know, I mean, they're, they're in a very interesting placement. Will they be able to? I don't know. You know, so there's a lot of unknowns associated with that and whether or not they will be able to change their ranges based on an increased uh, warming climate. Now, here's the other part though, uh, that I foresee is being issues. That seems like a possibly a net, positive in some ways that they will have an increased range, right? You, you could argue that's a good thing for them. Um, here's where it becomes a negative for them is with that warming climate, alligators and crocodiles 
and other animals too, like sea turtles, have what's called temperature-dependent sex determination. So the gender of the offspring is completely controlled by the temperature at which the eggs are incubated. And historically in conservation work, this has been a boon. This has been a great thing in conservation work because it means that we can collect eggs or have um, reproduction in captivity, and then we can artificially select the temperature range for egg incubation, and then we can decide what gender ratio we want to have in the offspring, which is great because it means that you could purposefully produce a lot more females than males because a male can obviously um, service many females and then we can have more reproduction going on. You know, that way you, if you have too many males and not enough females, you're not going to be able to produce enough eggs, you know? So if we have, if you switch that ratio and have way more females, you're going to be able to have more offspring over time, better for population growth, right? Um, the thing is, with alligators and crocodiles, uh, the way that I remember this is funny. So, how, what temperature produces what gender? So, the way that I remember this is with sea turtles, they live on the beach, and on the beach, you got hot chicks and cool dudes. So, for sea turtles, the warmer it is, the more females you get, and then the cooler dudes, you know, so lower temperatures produce more males. He's, he's down there actually looking for food right now. He's sweeping around underwater. He's doing that sweeping motion, trying to see if there's anything to eat over there, actually. Um, now, with crocodilians, it flips, which doesn't sound as cool. You know, with the beach, hot chicks, cool dudes at the beach. I guess in the swamp, it's hot dudes in the swamp. I don't know, whatever. But the point being, I know it doesn't make any sense. Uh, the point being, though, that the warmer temperature is going to produce more males. And so this is a big issue. This has already been a big issue for crocodilians because they are going to be nesting usually along rivers. And usually what happens when an area is being explored, the first thing that they do is they log the forest. And the first areas that are logged are the ones that are peripheral to the water because it's much easier to move the logs in the water. So they clear cut the forest along the river. That's exactly where they're nesting. So we've already run into issues with a preponderance of male individuals in a crocodilian population along areas where it has been logged. And that's already, you know, it's gonna be a conservation issue. You're not getting enough females out there to be able to breed. So that will be further exacerbated by climate change. Because not only do we have that logging issue going on, now we're gonna have higher temperatures overall, which is going to skew the gender ratio to be higher male anyway. So even if it's not logged, you could end up with a higher male um, you know, ratio than female. And so that's gonna cause issues right there as well. So that's a big concern too. I would say that that is the biggest concern that could possibly affect crocodilians is just that, that ratio going up and up. Now, maybe they can find a way to combat that, you know? Um, since they do construct their own nests, maybe they'll build nests differently that will be able to control the temperature. Are they smart enough to respond to those changes and adjust their nesting behavior? I don't know, maybe, I hope so, you know, but that's just a, again, hypothesis, I don't really know, but that's an interesting thing to consider, right? Now, other problems associated with climate change would also be raising sea level. Now, generally speaking, they live in the water, what do they care, right? But for alligators, well, crocodiles on one hand, so American crocodiles here, they can drink salt water and excrete the excess salt. So not a problem for them. For the alligators, though, they cannot do this. They cannot drink salt water. They can be in salt water all day. They can go in the ocean. They can swim around the ocean all day. They're fine, but they can't drink it. So if we do have rising sea levels, we have a saltwater intrusion into what are traditionally freshwater areas, and that can close up the habitat that would be usable for them. So that's an issue right there. Um, with alligators, it's not like it's gonna make them go extinct anytime soon, and there's plenty of rivers that they can live in on the interior. Even if Florida had saltwater intrusion from both sides of the state, which it will. Um, in the center, we have a lot of fresh water still. That would not be a foreseeable issue for any time within you know hundreds of years, I would think, um, just because of the way the Florida aquifer works, I think. Again, these are all my just personal speculations here, but. I wouldn't think it would be an issue for them anytime soon, but it, it, that is an issue to consider, you know? So that saltwater intrusion issue is something, um, an increased uh, amount of storms and an increased intensity of storms is also associated with climate change. That could cause problems um, for, well, for two different reasons, more hurricanes, it just does more ecological damage to the environment to, you know, I mean, just physical damage of storms blasting through more cat fives, uh, hurricanes hitting, that's obviously an issue right there. But another way to think about that too is with a, an increased frequency of storms leads to an unpredictability. So when we have unpredictable shifts in water levels, it can flood out their nests. 
So what they will do, alligators and crocodiles, they will change their nesting behavior based on how they predict the coming weather to be. And so, which obviously they don't know everything. So when we have like a big storm come through, water levels raise dramatically from a hurricane, floods out the nests, you know? So as that happens more often, we will have more total uh, nest losses within that time frame. And so theoretically, if you're having enough really intense storms with a high enough frequency, you could be flooding out nests at a point where they're not able to really keep up very well and it starts to affect the population. Because right now that naturally happens anyways. Um, you know, Cat 5 will happen. But if it's happening really often, and it, again, with unpredictable rising and falling of the water levels because of the storm, maybe that could affect the population over time. I don't know. I don't know how frequent these storms are going to be coming. Nobody really knows. So that is another possibility associated with climate change that could affect their populations. Now, obviously, all this kind of stuff could apply to all different kinds of animals, but alligators are my forte, so that's what I'm focusing on right here in this conversation. But those are the main ones that I could think of. Um, am I missing any, George? You just mentioned that it could affect other animals, but what about their prey? How would that affect them? Yeah, so that's a good point, too. Um, I don't know, because I would have to have more intimate knowledge about the prey species behaviors and how that would be affected by climate change, so I don't really know off the top of my head, but... Yes, of course, that makes sense, you know, so it's going to affect everything across the board. And I mean, you can have these trophic cascades. So let's say climate change, um, we already know, affects uh, coral. So we have massive coral bleaching events. We have some serious issues going on uh, with warming oceans affecting corals and mass coral die offs. That's going to have a trophic cascade. So what that means is it goes across like a cascade across each trophic level. So with corals being the base of that, that then affects these fish, which, you know, smaller fish, which then affects all the larger fish. And then it goes all the way up the, all, the entire system. So if you have like American crocodiles that are more brackish water or uh, full on saltwater animals and they're hunting a lot of fish, that's absolutely going to affect them. And um, with alligators, I mean, a lot of alligators do live coastally and so that will affect them as well you know um even though you know again we we're just talking about how they are mainly a freshwater animal they're absolutely in brackish water too they are in coastal areas too so that will affect them without a doubt and then just having the coral reef bomb that's going to affect the whole state of florida i mean it's all interconnected you know to varying degrees yes but it's all interconnected so their prey base will be affected by this too and it gets too complicated to be able to accurately uh, predict what might happen, but it's not gonna be good, no that much. It's, it's gonna be some gnarly stuff. So I think that covered just about everything that I could really make a, an educated guess on. You know, and, and again, these are just my personal hypotheses on this kind of thing. I don't really know, I'm not a climate scientist, but knowing these guys and going off of what other people have said is likely to happen that's how i could see those things playing out so i think that covered just about everything he's sinking down he's gonna try to bite my foot i think <laughs> he, he literally is he's sinking down he's like mm, can i eat that but uh but yeah I'm bring my feet in here a little bit and uh yeah i think that covers just about everything let me know in the comments what you guys think what uh questions you have that may be associated with this what uh questions would you like to see me try to cover in future videos and as always you know Thanks for watching, like, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.